the repentance which we have to undergo at the moment is not just national, it is global, as this report says in paragraph 30. About a fortnight ago, a friend left the following stark message on a mobile phone belonging to one of my children. Called to the plaza, I'm out. Told to report to reception. Don't use his email account again. The person concerned is, is not UK born, and uh, while she was not one of the high earners in the city, work provided her with the social world as well. With some hundreds of others, she was summoned one Friday to HQ. And the people who faced her across the table were not from the HR department. They were lawyers, they were security. She was asked if she had left anything on her desk. She mentioned her handbag. She was told to go directly to reception where her bag would be brought to her by security. Uh, there's been remarkably little about the global situation. It's very ironic that we've got to the point now where we have massively bailed out big banks and bailed out car manufacturers in the States, doing for them what we have not done for many nations in the third world. Yes, we have remitted debts in, say, Tanzania, but we still need to do it in the Philippines, in Bangladesh, in lots of other places. We are in severe danger of the very rich doing for the very rich what they have failed to do for the very poor. And that is shameful. It may well be that unemployment is only 5, 10, 13 percent. But when it's you, it's 100 percent. That's how it is for you when you lose your job. At this time of all times, we cannot be parochial. This stuff, as Andrew Switton-Smith says in his brilliant paper, is all joined up. We are all part of that same global economy. I was very excited when, in part three of this report, following on from the earlier paragraphs 17 and 18, we were told that we needed a change of thinking, maybe going back to Temple and Preston and others like that. Yes, I'm sure that's right. Nobody else is doing that work. Again, if we can't do it, shame on us. What we can do to stand alongside and help those who are suffering as a result of this crisis. But to say, how do we move forward out of this mess that we're in? And it won't simply do to readjust from the market economy to an old mixed economy with a still hoped for vague trickle down effect somewhere. As we all know, that actually doesn't happen. We heard from Wakefield before, same in Durham with third generation unemployment and so on. It might shock some of you to know that within walking distance of where I live, there are school teachers who save together and club together to buy shoes for some of their pupils so that those pupils can come to school. That's in our country. We need an economy locally and globally which puts the needs of the poor, not 5th or 7th or 17th, but first. And I want to work with the whole community to achieve that. And yes, of course we need more regulation. John Freeman is quite right about that. But I was talking to my brother, who until recently used to work for Lehman's Bank, so knows one or two things about this. And he said, it's all very well. Yes, we need more regulation. But anyone worth their salt in that profession can tick all the boxes, can say, yes, we'll keep these regulations and these regulations, and hire somebody clever to come round the back and still do what you were going to do anyway. What we need is a change of ethos, a change of culture, a change of heart. In short, Jeremiah-type repentance. Thank you.